Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about this reaction. So this is a typical hydrohalogenation of an alkene, where I have an alkene on the left side and I'm trying to react it with some sort of a hydrogen halide, HBr in this particular case. And if I were to use the Markovnikov rule, I would have a little bit of a trouble here. We know that the Markovnikov rule states that the halide goes to the most substituted carbon of the double bond, while the hydrogen goes to the least substituted carbon of the double bond. But here I have a secondary position right there and I have a secondary position right there. So am I going to get a mixture of products or am I going to get a major product of some sort? And it turns out that in this case we are definitely going to get a major product and this is one of those cases where you do need to have a very firm understanding of the mechanism of the reaction rather than rely on a simple heuristic like a Markovnikov rule which can easily break down in cases like this. So if I go through the mechanism of this reaction, my first step is going to be the electrophysics attack from the double bond onto my uh, HBr. In this case, HBr, of course, is going to be an electrophile and the double bond, the pi bond, is going to be a nucleophile. This electrophilic attack can give me two possible carbocations. I have a secondary carbocation on the left side and I have a secondary carbocation on the right side. So on the surface, they look the same. However, they are very much not the same because the one on the left is not just secondary, but it is also benzylic, which means that that carbocation cation is stabilized by the resonance and we do not have any resonance stabilization on the right. And as a matter of fact, if we were to make the carbocation on the right, then we would undergo a very quick carbocation rearrangement, making the one on the left via the hydride shift, because we know that if the carbocation can rearrange to give you a more stable carbocation, it absolutely will. So even if through some sort of a random chance I'm going to get my carbocation on the right, it will still rearrange to the one on the left. So then from here, uh, I'm going to do the nucleophilic attack by my Br- minus like this, which is going to give me the final product looking like that. I also want to point out that this molecule is chiral, so I do have a chiral atom over here, which means that in reality we are going to get a racemic mixture, where I have one molecule with a bromine looking at me and another molecule with a bromine looking away from me. If I wanted to give the R and S stereo descriptors, the one on the left, this one is going to be the S stereo isomer, and the one on the right is going to be the R stereoisomer. And of course, the relationship between my two molecules over here is going to be enantiomers. So as you can see, relying on simple heuristics like Markovnikov's rule without knowing the mechanism of the chemical reaction itself can easily betray you because in the cases like this one, for instance, Markovnikov rule fails. We don't have a more substituted or less substituted atom. However, the reaction is still extremely regioselective. So mechanism is always the most important thing that you can keep in mind when working through the reactions and don't over rely on the simple rules like Markovnikov rule or Zaitsev rule or anything of that sort. And that's all I have for you today. If you learned something new today, hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.